Okay, today we're going to talk about some new models of instruction. We have mostly used direct instruction throughout our teaching careers, but I'm going to introduce some indirect instruction measurements with you today. Um, this will be focused on full group discussion, and we will be talking about some of the ways that you can implement the, these kinds of teaching into your classroom management and classroom teaching. Okay, why should we change in the first place? Why is it not working anymore? Why do we need to go toward a new way of teaching or a new change per se? We should change our way of thinking and our way of teaching because the state of Tennessee is demanding us to. It is moving toward higher learning standards and more rigorous testing. Therefore, we need to change and tweak some of our lesson objectives and some of our teaching methods to reach all of our learners so that we can engage them and we can teach them more often and at a higher percentage rate. Direct instruction versus indirect instruction. You all know that direct instruction is where the sage is on the stage and we are instructing our kids and instructing our kids and showing them how to do it and then we say do this practice in your book without ever asking them any questions or asking them to come and try something on the board. Sometimes we do incorporate those things, but I'm going to talk a little bit more today about indirect instruction. So here's some of the comparisons. Direct instruction requires students to sit and listen. It reaches a small percentage of students. Think about when you learn. You learn more when you are actively engaged, when you are doing something, when you are writing, when you have to perform something, when you have to talk to a peer about something. Um, also, the traditional teaching method. Direct instruction is so traditional. We set up our classroom in rows, and we teach, teach, teach our little hearts out, and our kids get this much of it instead of this much of it. So, indirect instruction allows students to interact with each other and to the teacher. You still have a job in indirect instruction. You still have to monitor and adjust. You still have to present material, but you get to allow your children to be interactive with the lesson. If there's any coaches still here, please come to the office. Okay, indirect instruction reaches a large percentage of students. You want to reach your student. You want them to be actively engaged so that they understand what's going on in your lesson. Can they repeat that? Can they tell somebody else what happened? We want to relate to student interests, culture, and habits. Our kids are thumbs on all the time. When they aren't with us, they are thumbs on technology, they are fingers on. So if we want to reach our kids, we have to meet them where they are with technology. Now the school systems don't normally have enough money to meet that, but they do love to interact with each other. We also need to teach them how to appropriately interact. So allowing them to be in groups or pairs will allow them to do that, to interact with each other. A different way. Indirect instruction is a different way. It's not necessarily a better way, but it is a different way. Lessons can be presented using many different in indirect instruction strategies. There are many different indirect instruction strategies where you can allow your students to be highly engaged. Today we will discuss several strategies which we can use during full group discussion. Full group discussion may include you as the teacher moderating the task, you giving them something to discuss per group or per class, 